finally, after four months of transiting in Taurus, Venus will enter the sign of Gemini. And it will be there for the next 25 days almost. And this is a very important transit because this is the transit uh, after the sign of retrogression. So uh, from now on, you will start feeling the difference actually. Now, that doesn't mean that uh, nothing happened before, but uh, Gemini is the original sign of communication. And Gemini shows that uh, whenever any planet transits Gemini, uh, what happens is, there are certain issues uh, which you will be forced to communicate, okay? So therefore, uh, this transit is a very beautiful transit, uh, depending on your dashas, of course, uh, and your overall horoscope, uh, to communicate regarding those areas which Venus rules in your chart. Now, where will you communicate? That will depend on the house where Gemini is, okay? So, for example, if you are Leo ascendant, then Gemini is your 11th house. If you are Capricorn, then Gemini is your 6th house. So, similarly, these are the areas uh, where you will go to do communication. Okay? So, for example, um, if you take Capricorn, then Venus is the Lord of the 5th and the 10th. And now it enters the 6th house. So that means some uh, something to do with career you might have to communicate through your daily job or something related to your health or these kind of things could be there and the transit is very uh, interesting because of the nakshatras and of course the main reason is rahu is still hovering around mm, in gemini and he is going to enter taurus very soon so therefore um, this is the conjunction of Venus and Rahu in uh, the sign of Gemini and Rahu is in the initial degrees of Gemini of course around two or three degrees I guess and in September if I'm correct uh, Rahu Ketu will change signs to Taurus and Scorpio respectively so now this one week is very crucial because during this one week Venus will be very 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 close to Rahu okay so, um, therefore, um, during this week, whichever house is Venus rules in your chart, you might feel that there is a obsession regarding uh, communicating certain things. Okay? And um, depending on the nakshatras, also the flavor will change. So, for example, the first nakshatra is Mrigashira, then the next nakshatra is Ardra, then the next nakshatra is Punarvasu, of course. So, uh, whenever a planet uh, transits Mrigashira, now Venus has already been in Mrigashira from a long time, in the Taurus part of Mrigashira. Uh, but now it will be in the Gemini part of Mrigashira. So, therefore, uh, Gemini, see, Tau Taurus can uh, deal with things related to meeting people and just wanting to meet somebody, wanting something. Venus shows desire, actually. But Mercury shows communication. So the Mrigashira part of um, this Gemini, which is there, uh, which is ruled by Mercury, of course. This is a very interesting nakshatra, the third and the fourth pathas, which fall inside Gemini. They, they can show that uh, the communication which you always wanted to do regarding certain things is now coming into the forefront and you are actually doing the communication. And um, because uh, Rahu is also there, so it can sometimes feel that things are bloated beyond what it is required to be bloated. So therefore, this is a very good time to uh, think uh, and act uh, whenever it comes to communication rather than just uh, speaking whatever you want. So it could happen that you might have to cut a sorry face later on because um, now, when planets transit Gemini, we have the tendency to speak without thinking, okay? So, therefore, um, suppose, as I said, for Capricorn, if Venus is your fifth lord, so be careful what you speak to your child. Tenth lord, be careful what you speak to your boss or be careful who you send a mail to, okay? Or what you write, basically. 
and uh, Gemini is also the original third sign which also shows uh, uh, things which give you a kind of a craving actually so therefore uh, you might have this temptation to do certain things but you should sit down and deliberate before you do certain things related to the houses which Venus rules in the chart and then when it transits the Ardra Nakshatra which completely falls inside Gemini that is the time uh, when uh, you will realize that uh, you have to break certain patterns and boundaries which are not serving you anymore and when Venus transits Ardra uh, the houses that Venus rules in your chart they can undergo a certain change you know it's like bang on 180 degree or 360 degree sometimes because this change uh, is happening in the nakshatra of rudra ardra is ruled by uh, lord shiva i mean it's not literally ruled i mean it's ruled by rahu naksha planetary wise but uh, it it is very intimately linked with lord shiva okay so many times people are very much fearful of ardra they think or oh, Ardhra is teardrop, so that means you know somebody is going to die in my family or something like this, or maybe I will have a breakup or divorce or something like this, or nothing like that. Uh, that that only happens if your dashas are indicating that, not that one planet comes and gives you divorce or somebody dies like this. Okay, so it, it doesn't happen like that. You don't have to worry. But what you need to take care from your side is that uh, there are certain patterns which you might have to. A break when it comes to Ardra Nakshatra, where Venus will transit after some time, and then when it will enter Punar Vasu Nakshatra, the first three padas will fall there. Punar Vasu is the Nakshatra uh, which tells you to perfect things. Okay, it's uh, linked with uh, Aditi, the the God, the mother actually. Okay, so. Uh, she is the mother of the devatas, you know, and that is why the uh, devatas have another name. They are known as Adityas. Okay? Aditya means son of Aditi. Okay? And that is why another name of Lord Vishnu is also Aditya because uh, he also had taken Avtar as uh, Baman Dev, as the son of Aditi uh, and Kashyap. So, therefore, he is also known as Aditya. Okay? So, the thing is, um, now, we have to understand that when Venus transits Punarvasu, Punarvasu also deals with uh, forgiveness. Because, because why does it deal with forgiveness? Because uh, forgiveness uh, is very essential in life or any relationship, not only uh, sp with spouse. Because uh, there are things which people will do in your life which uh, you may feel uh, very bad about, but then uh, you might have to you will realize that when Venus transits Punavasu, you might have to forgive somebody for certain things which you thought before I would not never forgive this person for, all right? So uh, when Venus as the planet of uh, love and creativity and uh, romance transits Punavasu, it's a good time to forgive each other, Okay, your spouse and your spouse forgives you for the mistakes actually which uh, you might have done in within the relationship. So, and uh, Ardhra, what Ardhra does is Ardhra gives you uh, deeper realizations within yourself because of which it becomes easier to forgive somebody because uh, forgiveness is an act of the bold. Cowards and idiots and thugs cannot forgive. They will always take their ego actually. Uh, so only strong people can forgive. Uh, many times people say, Oh, I never forgive that person. Ever. That means you are weak. You cannot forgive because your ego is so bloated that uh, you think you are God. You think everybody should obey you. Nobody can disobey you. Nobody can disagree with you. So people boasting about how they cannot forgive some somebody is they are just uh, blabbering like uh, you know like have you seen uh, anyways <laughs> so it's like boasting about one's own weaknesses all right that's how people are in Kaliwa sometimes many times they see oh I never forgive somebody you know I am a Leo I have moon in Leo I have sun in Leo my Venus is in Leo I never forgive anybody. 
it has nothing to do with um, which sun sign or moon sign you have. Of course, that has a role. But the thing is, uh, many times people say that those who have a strong sun cannot forgive people. Have you seen? Yeah, they say, oh, his son is very strong. He never forgives anybody. No, nonsense. That person, whoever says like this doesn't know anything about astrology. One whose son is weak. Okay, now what does it mean weak? Because we have the example of Lord Ram. That uh, Lord Ram had said to uh, Sugri that uh, if even if Ravan comes to me and asks forgiveness and returns back Sita to me, then I will forgive him also. So those people who have a strong son, uh, because see, the son is the karaka for light. Son knows to give. Son never takes. Okay. So if anybody says, I cannot uh, forgive somebody, which means you cannot give something to somebody, then that means your son is not strong enough. Okay, It may be in Leo, it may be in Aries, or the problem is it may be afflicted. So afflicted or uh, a bad son can give you a... Uh, uh, overconfidence okay or inability to forgive somebody so generally they say if son is in the ascendant people cannot forgive well it's not true if the son is well placed you will be able to forgive okay if son is not then you cannot all right it's very simple <laughs> because it requires a lot of inner strength to forgive somebody so that's the level of stupidity of people in Kali Yuga who boast about their inability to forgive. It's just an expression of their inner helplessness which they have. Okay, And that is why these people, they mostly are unhappy in life. They are always miserable. They are they're very moody. They are very cranky all the time, have you seen? <laughs> because they think everybody should revolve around them actually. Okay. Everything should go according to their wish, their desire. And that is why they have very uh, lots and lots of challenges and they take offense very easily or they pick up fights which are baseless, which are useless. But they will start picking fights anywhere and everywhere. All right? So uh, if this sounds like somebody, then um, if you have these traits, then this is a very good time to... <coughs> introspect and ponder upon your own weaknesses. The easiest way to forgive others is to realize that uh, you also have weaknesses. Everybody has weaknesses and everybody has uh, challenges and difficulties. Everybody has a different upbringing. You know? Everybody has a different bent of mind depending on their uh, car, uh, depending on their actions which they had taken in the past. So therefore, something could be very easy for you to do. But it's not mandatory that that same thing will be like a cakewalk for the other person also. Yes, sometimes uh, people tell me that for them it's very easy to make money. And so when they are staying with somebody uh, who is unable to make money, they get irritated. Well, maybe that ability is there in you, but it's not necessary that uh, the other person also is like that. So... When Venus transits Gemini and especially Punar was after Ardhra. So Ardhra breaks the ego because uh, Ardhra can, uh, Ardhra is tears, right? Who cries? Tears is suffering, Saturn actually, okay? So when you, where, why does a person cry? Because the person realizes that I'm helpless. I can't do anything actually. I cannot change the situation. I'm so miserable. I feel like dying, right? So then the person realizes, I myself have so many shortcomings. You know, I myself have so many inabilities. So then Punarvasu gives them the uh, ability to forgive somebody. Right? Otherwise, if people are bloated with their egos, then pook. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's a good chance which we have when planets enter Punarvasu, and especially planets like Venus. And Punarvasu is also ruled by Jupiter. So this also this energy also helps. Okay. And because Ardhra is ruled by Rahu, there is an element of suddenness in it. You know, some sudden shock you get, and you're like, oh my god, this happened. I thought this will happen. Now this has happened. That means everything doesn't go according to my wish. That is the thing which Ardhra tells you. And then Punarvasu forces you to bend yourself. Okay. Actually, Punarvasu doesn't do Ardhra itself does it, but you uh, start implementing forgiveness when uh, that planet enters Punarvasu Nakshatra. All right. Thank you very much for your patience. And if you would like to see other videos on Ardhra or Punarvasu, I'll put it here. And if you want a consultation from me, please go to my website down below. 
and if you are new then please subscribe to it and God is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him.